Hello everyone and welcome to my last review of Star Wars Rebels Until the Fall. Sad to see any season end, but this is it. Zero Hour, Season 3, Finale of Star Wars Rebels. Let's do a quick recap of the episode, dive into its positives and negatives, and take an outlook into what we might see in the future. Alright, first, I love how this episode opens up. Agent Callus uses a mouse droid to spy on Thrawn, which is just great to see. And we find out that Thrawn has discovered that the Rebels are planning to attack Lothal, which they've discussed over the past few episodes. Callus goes to Ezra's home to send a message as Fulcrum. I do appreciate them going back to Lothal and to Ezra's home, basically where this all started for the show. I think it was a nice touch to kind of come full circle and to see those first images come back. Thrawn and his Death Troopers, which was a nice touch, track Callus there and block his transmission. They then kind of have a fistfight duel, and I actually like Thrawn's basically condescension saying that, you know, Callus, you're really skilled, but only through the Imperial Academy training. You know, Ka Thrawn has had a larger scope of training and martial arts. And this was just a small, great moment I liked from Thrawn, and they take Callus prisoner. Back at the Rebel base, Hera and the team figure out that the Empire is coming just seconds before Thrawn's fleet arrives. Some of the Rebel fleet is already in space above Adelon, and they attempt to escape through hyperspace, but the Empire has interdictor cruisers with gravity wells that prevent them. I really like this because I love seeing the interdictors, it's a great part of canon and think this was just a nice touch to add, and tactically, of course, very smart of Thrawn. On the ground, Kanan seeks help from the Bendu, who is very mad that more is at his doorstep. Meanwhile, as the Rebels take heavy losses in space, Commander Sato rams his ship into Constantine's interdictor, which has moved out of position, defying Thrawn's orders. The ship explodes, basically killing everyone, and this has opened up a gap for Ezra to escape the system and get help for the Rebels. This was, a, this was a sad moment of the two episodes, the finale. I have enjoyed Sato's character in Rebels, and, but you know, it, it made sense that he wouldn't last the series. We don't see him in Rogue One or New Hope or anything like that. But mad respect to you, Sato. You went out basically saving everyone, doing what you had to do. The Rebels flee to the surface and they turn on their shield generator, which they acquired earlier this season to protect from orbital bombardment. I enjoy this moment as all the store destroyers basically launch everything they have. Because you know, I've, I've read a lot about orbital bombardments and we've seen them in uh, other pieces of Star Wars media, but to really see it on screen like this was fun to see because I don't think I've really seen it besides some video games and just other stuff like that. Um, and just seeing the shield work was really fun. I, I really enjoyed that and it really looked cool from an artistic perspective. We then see Ezra get Sabine and she says, okay, I'll come help, brings a small force to aid the rebels. Ezra's also tried to reach out to Mon Mothma to get additional help, but she can't assist. Doing so would just play into Thrawn's hand. On Adelon, the Empire has begun a ground assault with Thrawn right with them. Then come out the beloved walkers. I love it when Rex says, I know that sound, and Zeb says, I hate that sound. It was a great line given the iconic noise of the Imperial walkers. Other po points from this I thought was cool was when Kanan sliced up one of the walkers. It gave me a flashback to Luke on Hoth in a way, which was really nice. Also, I'm not sure if it was done on purpose, but when the walkers start shooting down rebel transports that are leaving, it looks exactly like every end scene in Walker Assault from Star Wars Battlefront, for what it's worth. Now, the finale. Bendu has become an epic storm of wind and lightning, and is just flat out pissed at everyone. He attacks pretty much everything that moves. He wants everyone off his planet. And this kind of distraction from the Imperials just overrunning the Rebels allows what's left of the Rebels to escape. And a great line that Thrawn says is, 
what Jedi devilry is this as lightning is basically striking and destroying all the Imperial walkers and troops and it's just nuts but Thrawn's pretty smart and has his forces concentrate fire on the Bendu in the middle and he falls out of the sky the show ends with the rebels escaping and even picking up Callus, who has escaped his guards and launched from an escape pod they talk about going to Yavin which you know hints as what we see in Rogue One Thrawn meets the Bendu then they speak and Bendu foretells Thrawn's defeat and Thrawn shoots him but Bendu basically pulls an Obi-Wan and disappears before his eyes so we'll talk a little bit about that in a minute but overall this episode was entertaining had great effects from the space battles to the Bendu chaos I've really enjoyed the story arc of Kalos and am excited to see what they do with him in the future I will say I'm a bit disappointed in Thrawn um, even though he scored a victory like definitely the Empire won I was hoping for a little more well, well Thrawn just Thrawn maybe I'm just too much of a Thrawn fan and wanted to see more tact and annihilation and precision at this point because we've been heavily teased all season of you know some he's going to just tear these rebels apart and I think we just did see him at his max potential like it was all set up for it but it was just ah and I blame Tarkin for ordering prisoners even though Thrawn's like you know don't have to and Constantine for being an idiot and getting his interdictor out of position letting Ezra escape and bringing reinforcements and to be fair no one could have been prepared for the Bendu so I don't blame Thrawn for that at all so speaking of that it'll be interesting to see what they will do with Thrawn here I think his meeting with the Bendu could have a major impact on Thrawn as a person maybe he rethinks his intelligence as he realizes you know he's not the wisest person in the world there's these great other mystical forces that he's seen right before his eyes maybe this is what draws him to go explore uh, more of the unknown regions in canon or some other personal mission for more knowledge um, as we don't see him much in the uh, at all in the original trilogy in canon um, we could get some clues in his book that's upcoming well, and we'll see if they stick to more of a legend Thrawn like you know what his whole story was or with this Bendu thing they take any new turns or explain anything there so that'll be something to keep an eye on for sure also liked how Ezra has grown up this season he's taking command in this episode and is also taking direction from others without questioning or nagging or complaining also enjoyed Hera and Kanan's love for each other it was nice to see on screen I just man I just have a bad feeling Kanan is not going to last the series that's for sure anyways I thought this was a great season finale you can't really top season 2 finales of Ahsoka, Vader, and Maul last season but this one was satisfying for sure I think Rebels has interweaved and meshed well into all the canon stories this season and they just have developed the characters really well and have had some epic moments that I truly enjoyed sure they've had a few duds but overall this has been really solid I think every season has been building and uh, every season definitely has its key moments and this one was this one was good it was solid so I'll be doing more on what I think the outlook of season 4 is on a future episode but let me know what your thoughts of the season finale of Zero Hour was what do you expect from season 4 let me know in the comment section below and I hope to see you all on the next Star Wars lore